Hello, everyone, and welcome to the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. You can find me on Ravelry as Liddy Knits 2 and on Instagram as a Read Knit Run. Today is March 28th. It is a Thursday, and this is episode 57. If you're a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad you found this channel. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you so much for subscribing. So it has been about a month since I have seen you guys last in a traditional episode. I took a break from filming traditional episodes so I could do the D Heart House sock knit along for this year, which is something that I would like to make an annual an event. Yeah. So the D Heart House sock knit along is still underway. There are video tutorials talking you through each phase of knitting a particular sock pattern. Uh, this year I decided to do for the first one ever, should I mention, this is the first time I've done this, okay? Uh, I knit just a plain stockinette style sock but used two different color yarns and did some striping <laughs> techniques. Would you like to be on the podcast today? Are you concerned? You don't get to be on the podcast? Should I bring down the camera so they can see the Marjorie? <laughs> can you wait till after the episode? Can you please wait till after the episode? And then we can go out there together? She may not be able to wait till I'm finished recording, but we'll see. So what was I saying? My dog was asking me for something. Uh, so that knit along is still underway. In fact, that knit along will run through April 13th. So I want to give everyone enough time to finish up the second sock and be able to post pictures of the finished result in the D Heart House podcast thread on Ravelry. So by the way, we have a thread on Ravelry for the podcast called the D Heart House podcast group, and that's hosted on Ravelry in the forums. And uh, you do not have to finish your socks in order to be eligible to win a prize. All the details are there in the D Hard House Sock Cal 2019 thread in the podcast group. So if you're interested, you still have time to join in. Like I said, you don't have to actually finish the pair of socks to be eligible to win. So if you're curious, go check that out on Ravelry and join the group. Okay. So that was my first announcement. And it's so good to be back to regular episodes. It's just nice every once in a while to take a break from the usual and try something new. And then when you come back, the usual is also kind of fresh and new. And I really like that. So anyway, <laughs> my second announcement is that I've released a new pattern on Ravelry, the Patricia Socks. And the Patricia Socks are named after my mother, which is who I designed these socks for. So the Patricia Socks featured on the screen somewhere there's a picture, I imagine. And uh, this sock pattern is actually pretty simple. There's a maximum of a four row repeat uh, for the patterning. It's all knit and purl stitches and a mock cable. So there is no cable needle that is needed. Uh, the pattern is charted. So you do want to be able to read charts, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and that pattern is 20% off during the first month of release. And I opened up that pattern 
on March 20th of 2019. So the 20% off coupon is good through the end of day on April 20th, 2019. And that end of day is central daylight time, which is where I'm currently located. I went on and searched Central Standard Time and then realized we're on Central Daylight Time now because daylight savings time occurred. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So that's it for announcements right up front. So let's get into the knitting content. So it has been, like I said, around a month since the last time I've seen you guys, and I have zero finished objects. None. Okay, let me explain. The sock knit along was happening, so I was working on those. Also, a lot of life stuff, which I'm going to talk about at the end of the podcast, but I have no finished objects. Did knitting occur? Absolutely. So I have plenty of works in progress to show you. So my first work in progress is ginormous and on the needles with lots of stitch markers and it looks like a mess. <laughs> but this is the sweater that I'm knitting for my husband. As you can see, it is knit, maybe you can tell, <laughs> it is knit bottom up and I've just attached the sleeves. Where's the sleeve right here? Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> So this is actually a cardigan pattern. So it is knit flat. I'm now showing you the wrong side of the pattern. This is the inside of the cardigan. And if I can flip it around, the right side. This is going to be really hard to show you because it's all scrunched up on the needles. This is definitely the widest part of the pattern with the body and the sleeves on here. But, oh my gosh, I've attached the sleeves and I'm so excited. Okay, so the pattern. So the pattern is The Ranger by Jared Flood, which is a super flattering unisex cardigan. <laughs> and I've knit this pattern before. Uh, I knit this for my father last year and Michael liked it so much, my husband, that he said he wanted one too. So I'm knitting this for him. So the pattern is The Ranger by Jared Flood. Really love the pattern. Easy to follow. I'm knitting it a second time. I highly approve. Why don't you get a chewy? Go get a chewy. Go get chewy. The yarn that I'm using for the cardigan is Cloudborn Fibers Highland Worsted in the Charcoal Heather colorway. So it is a worsted weight yarn, which makes the pattern go even faster. And this yarn is 100% wool which is super cool. This yarn is available on craftsy.com. Craftsy <laughs> uh, I am all in favor of affordable yarns, so yes. Anyway, I'm, anyway, I've made progress on the sweater and that's all that matters. So I was hoping to be a lot further along, but yeah. I have like four other things to show you, so <laughs> yeah. So that's the Ranger by Jared Flood, two thumbs way, way up. Love the pattern. Can't wait to, to finish that and see Michael wear it. My next work in progress is a sweater for myself, and this is the Brick by Claire Lee, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. So it's a really basic top-down sweater, uh, stockinette stitch, no color work, nothing super fancy, which is always nice to have in a wardrobe. So yeah, I've made some progress. I currently have it on two needles because I was trying this on this morning, and I'm not too far away from finishing the body. I think maybe four more inches and then I'll be good. So yeah, this is um, 
Top down sweater, I'll come back later and pick up for the ribbing around the neckline. So the neckline is not going to look like this in the finished pro project. Um, and I need to knit the sleeves as well. It is going to be a long sleeve sweater. So yeah, I'm really excited. Um, this stitch marker is showing where I was last time I showed this to you guys. So I think I added a whole skein of yarn to this and yeah, it looks awesome. It looks so awesome and I love this color. It's so pretty. Anyway, yes, I'm really excited. So I'll have to get this all back on one needle because I don't have two needles available that are the same size so I used a smaller needle so I could try it on anyway it's whatever <laughs> yeah so yay it's coming along so well and I'm super excited uh, the yarn that I'm using is yarn B soft and sleek and this is another worsted weight yarn. This is 100% acrylic. So this is another acrylic sweater for my stash, which is awesome. <laughs> Again, affordability is important. So yeah, I made a lot of progress on that. The, the brick sweater was mostly worked on while watching TV because you just knit, knit, knit in the round and it's perfect TV knitting. And also when I'm working on the body of a sweater and I know I have a gazillion inches to go, I'm not constantly stopping to measure and check to see how far I am. So that also makes it easy to just keep knitting, just keep knitting while I'm watching TV. My next work in progress is a pair of socks, and this is the pair of socks for the DeHart House Sock Knit Along for 2019, which is still going on until April 13th. <laughs> anyway, I did finish one sock, as was required to make tutorial videos. <laughs> so this is the one finished sock. The other sock is still in progress, and that is over here. I'm in the middle of the heel, which is one of the most annoying places to pause and set this down, <laughs> but that was my life at the moment. So um, yeah, they are knit cuff down with two different colors of yarn. I'm using US size one needles, which is a 2.25 millimeter. I'm working with two 16 inch circular needles. These are from Knit Picks. They're great needles. I love them. The yarn is, the gray is Patton's Croy in the gray marl colorway, and the black is Premier Yarns in the black colorway. <laughs> uh, what's kind of neat is that the yarns are slightly different thicknesses, so the Patton's Croy is just a little bit thicker than the Premier Yarns, which adds an extra bit of just add something extra, you guys, to these socks. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, the Patton's Croy is definitely a nice, strong, sturdy sock yarn. And I wanted to make sure to put the Patton's Croy on the heel. I'm knitting these socks for my husband. And um, yeah, I just need to make sure that heel is going to hold up. <laughs> so... <laughs> I have not knit enough with the Premier yarns to know how well it holds up over time, um, so we shall see. I will keep you posted if I have any updates on that. <laughs> but yes, I just think these socks are so fun to add um, the stripes in because, as you guys know, knitting a really plain black sock is boring. It's boring. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, but anyway, check out the D Hard House Sock Cal 2019 video series on this channel if you're curious. I talk you through all of the steps of knitting one of these socks, okay? Um, how many rounds, how many stitches, how many repeats, how to do the heel, how to do the stripes, everything like that. So if you're curious, check it out. 
So my last work in progress that I want to talk about today is a new cast on and a new design. So this is brand new. Unless you follow me on Instagram, then you saw a picture of it. Oh, P.S. Um, I am posting on the D Hard House Instagram account for um, designs and yarn and bags and things like that. Um, just to separate it from my personal account so that uh, if you want just the yarny project bag goodness, uh, then follow the D Hard House account. If you want to see what else I'm working on and things about my life, then follow me as Read Knit Run on Instagram. Okay, so <laughs> I started a new shawl design and I'm really excited about it because it's crazy colorful and it's end of March, which means I'm already mowing the lawn. I'm watering the lawn. Like, spring is here, you guys. Pollen is in the air. Everyone's allergies are going crazy. It is spring here. And spring, to me, means colorful. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling really colorful. So, I have a lot of stitches on the needle. And I'm really afraid of dropping them, so I'm not going to spread this out to show you guys. But it is a top-down, does that make sense? Top-down triangle shawl, okay? <laughs> Where you start with a garter tab. And I am knitting this with two yarns, which I'll show you in a moment. But... Yes, this is, okay, the color is not super amazing on screen, so I will show you guys a, a little video I took instead. So, yeah, the yarn that I'm using is, I've got a, a gray and this crazy, beautiful, colorful skein. So, the gray is tonal, and this is from Knit Picks. This is Hawthorne Fingering in the Slate colorway and it's kettle dyed. So yeah, it's, okay, on camera it's looking like a solid gray, but I swear it's tonal, which looks amazing knit up. Um, so I've got a nice neutral color and then the colorful skein has a tag here somewhere. <laughs> The colorful skein is Western Sky Knits, and I picked this up at, I believe it was DFW Fiberfest, maybe two years ago. I'm horrible. I should label these when I buy them. <laughs> anyway, Western Sky Knits, they came down to Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, uh, the Dallas Fort Worth area. Technically, it's hosted in Irving, Texas. But anyway, um, so this is uh, on their Aspen Sock Base, which is an 80 20 merino nylon blend. And oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know why, but on screen, it's not. On screen, it's more muted. In real life, it's more vibrant and wonderful. But anyway, um, there is no gray in this skein, but I wanted a nice neutral to go with it in a way that it would contrast everywhere. There'd be no overlap. There's a little bit of brown in here, and I thought about pairing it with a brown skein, but I wanted it to be very clear that I was using two very different colors. So... I'm loving this shawl. I can't wait to see it finish because scrunched up on the needles, I just, you know, I'm anticipating taking it off the needles, seeing how big it is, seeing the stitches for real, and how awesome it looks. So, um, I did knit a little swatch for my shawl to get an idea of the stitches that I wanted to use. Of course, I left that in the other room, so I'll share that with you another time. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm loving working on this. I'm loving that the pattern is turning out to be pretty simple. Personally, for me, I like to knit patterns that are 
quite intuitive and don't have me reading the pattern on every single row. I like my knitting to be fun and relaxing and if I'm having to read instructions all of the time, it's not as fun and relaxing. Um, so that's what I'm shooting for with this pattern is for it to be fun, easy, and super awesome when it's finished. So I am going to call this my New Horizons shawl and I don't know how long it will take me to finish knitting this and writing up the pattern. So, you know, I will keep you posted here on the podcast as well as on the D Hard House Instagram account. And if any of you are ever interested in test knitting for me, please send me a message either on Ravelry at Liddy Knits 2 or on Instagram uh, at D Hard House. All right, guys, so that covers all of the knitting content. <laughs> now, I cast on that shawl. Like, I got inspiration. I cast on that shawl. That's a lot of knitting. I put a lot into the body of two sweaters and knit a whole sock while doing video tutorials on it and half of another sock. So, I mean, that's a decent amount of knitting in three to four weeks. So, I'm okay with that. Would I like to actually finish something? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so at this point, let me tell you about my non-knitting content. So this is the fitness and life section of the podcast. And let me start off by saying that with my running, okay, I went running on Sunday earlier this week. And I posted about this on Instagram. Some of you have seen it. I tripped and fell. I tripped and I fell and I caught myself a little bit with my hands. It definitely looks a lot better now, <laughs> but you can kind of still see some speckling here of where I caught myself, I landed on the, it's not gravel, it's like a pea stone style um, road where they put down tar and then little rocks and, you know, it dries and that makes the road. Anyway, <laughs> so it's very bumpy. It's not like blacktop or cement where it's like, it's pretty flat. No, that thing was bumpy. So yeah, I... You know, you trip and you fall and your hands go first to protect you. So my hands went first, but my hands did not stop my face from hitting the ground. So, yeah, this right here, this right here. I was wearing uh, my contact lenses. I don't like wearing, <laughs> I'm so finicky. <laughs> My glasses have nose pads, and I don't know why, but glasses with nose pads, like, they tickle my nose when I'm running. It's a weird sensation, and it annoys the living daylights out of me. <laughs> so part of the reason uh, I got contact lenses is because I know that my nose pads bother me. Now, I have um, transition lenses which is the only reason these glasses are as thick as they are. <laughs> okay, my my prescription is very weak, okay? I, I can see you guys just fine right here. What I can't see is road signs far away, which is why I have glasses. Okay, so I was wearing my contact lenses and sunglasses because it's really sunny. And they're made out of plastic and they don't have nose pads and they don't bother me at all when I'm running. So what happened is I fell. I caught myself with my hands. I had enough momentum going that my face hit the ground, <laughs> but I didn't go straight forward. Some instinct kicked in and I turned to the side and my sunglasses broke. Like I hit the ground so hard that the sunglasses broke. And I think what happened is it jabbed the plastic piece into my face. And that's why I got cut right here. Okay. 
Now you can maybe see on the screen, I'm, it's starting to bruise now, <laughs> which is horrible because I look like I look like I've been beaten and I have not been beaten. And that's a serious thing that I would never joke about. So anyway, I literally fell while running. I tripped on an uneven part of the sidewalk. I don't know why, but around town, the sidewalks are insanely um, uneven. You know, there's there's tree roots that go under the sidewalk um, and you can expect up to 12 inches of difference because of tree roots. There are some places where the sidewalks just stop and then restart again or they stop and then on the other side of the road you have to walk up stairs made out of cinder blocks to get to the sidewalk. It's just, it's really difficult to find a nice safe, enjoyable place to run around this town, which is sad because myself and some of my colleagues like to go outside and go running. Uh, I have some colleagues who are training to run marathons. Kudos to you. I'm not, I'm not remotely even close to that yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, we were talking about me tripping and falling and they were like, yeah, it's a real problem. And it, it could happen to any of us. So it happened to me in the moment that, it, okay, so I hurt my, my hands, not too bad. I expected them to be scraped up a lot more than they were. I'm glad they weren't. I expected my face to be a lot worse because gosh, did it hurt. <laughs> and then I also scraped my knee on the on the ground during that fall. So my knee is scraped up, which is weird because I was wearing pants while running, but somehow it scraped through my pants, it did not rip my pants, which is amazing. I need to look at the label and see what brand they are. <laughs> did not rip my pants, but my knee still got scraped. Now my knee is bruised. It looks a lot like my face. I'm sure tomorrow it's going to look even worse. Anyway, so I pick myself up off the ground. I don't know everywhere that I'm hurt yet. I pick myself up off the ground. And the first thing I notice is there are my sunglasses on the ground broken. Second thing I notice is that it looks like there's blood everywhere. <laughs> so if you have ever cut your face or your fingertips or something like that, you know that those places bleed a lot. Um, that a small cut can bleed a lot. So... I knew it was coming from my face because I could feel the blood running down my cheek. So I, at this point, the sunglasses are off my face. So I just hold pressure to the side of my face. I have no idea how big the cut is or anything. I always take my phone with me when I go for a run, just in case. Holy cow, thank goodness I had this phone with me. So, so I call my husband and of course it's ringing and ringing and ringing and I'm like please pick up the phone please so he does he does I told him keep the phone nearby just in case I need to call you and I'm always really good about that that I always make sure to tell someone where I'm going and how long you know I'll, I'll be gone for 20 to 30 minutes so if it's been an hour and he hasn't heard from me he should wonder is my wife okay? <laughs> Cause you just, I just, I like being safe anyway. So yeah, I call him and I said, I fell, I'm bleeding, come now. And then I told him where I was in town and he came, he came right away. He picked me up. Of course he looked like his reaction made me think, oh gosh, I look like I must look like I was in a car accident because his face was just okay. So yeah, I, we get, we get home and I clean up in the bathroom and yeah, I look in the mirror and I just, there is blood all down my arm. There's blood all down my face. There's blood drips on my shirt. 
it just looks, it looks horrendous. And it's just this little spot. That's all it was, is this little tiny spot. Not a big deal. Anyway, I'm fine. I was definitely sore uh, for the first couple days after that. Uh, I took a lot of Tylenol, but no stitches, no broken things, no sprained things. Like, I'm just, I'm bruised and I'm sore. Um, and I definitely know that I need to watch where I'm stepping even more than I, I already do. So, anyway. <laughs> that was hilarious. Looking back, it's just hilarious. Anyway, so... I would blame my lack of running on me falling, except that that happened way down here. <laughs> okay, so this is my bullet journal where, uh, this is one of the pages where I log my running, and this is for the month of March. Very little running has happened. Very little running, okay? So, uh, the green is for an indoor run on the treadmill. That teal color is for an outdoor run. That teal one right there, that is where I fell, okay? So, all these days up here, I cannot blame on me falling, but I want to. No, all these empty days up here are to blame for something else that I'm going to talk about. But, yeah, I haven't done much running. So, <laughs> let me just show you February, where I did, like, a lot, okay? And a lot of it was indoor. Some of it was outdoor. Uh, I'm in Texas. It's, it's already, when I ask Alexa for the weather, <laughs> I mean, we're getting highs in the 70s. 70 degree Fahrenheit range to 80 degree Fahrenheit. I mean, it, 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 yeah, okay. Like I said, I'm already having to mow my lawn and stuff. Anyway, so I've fallen behind on running. I'm not going to um, go for a run again, treadmill or otherwise, until the bruising on my knee goes down. Um, I did bruise my left knee. I have had troubles with my left knee in the past and I just don't want to set myself up for an actual injury. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna rest as long as I need to until that bruising goes down. Maybe not completely go away, but at least go down. Um, cause I just don't, I want it to heal. I don't want to hurt myself any more than I already have. <laughs> anyway, so that's, um, I thought I'd share that blunder with you guys. I'm not going to let it deter me and stop me. Um, if you fall, you get back up again and clean up the blood and go a few weeks later. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it does throw a wrench into my plans of trying to crush my miles from last year, but it's not worth getting an actual knee injury over it. So yeah, hopefully this doesn't get any worse and I can get back into it. Anyway, so the other thing I wanted to talk about in my non-knitting segment is part of the reason that I haven't done some of that other running. And that's because I have been filling out job applications to try to move to a different part of the country and work for a different college and potentially at a place where my husband can also teach. So my husband and I both uh, have master's degrees in mathematics and we both uh, have been pursuing the career of teaching. So I got a teaching position at uh, this college here. Um, however, he did not. He has a more of a staff position. So, <laughs> um, you guys, I accepted a new position at a new institution in a new state, in a new place to start in the fall. So we are going to be moving 
sometime between now and then, which is exciting. So I have been um, really busy with uh, the job hunt, um, the job interview process. I mean, any of you who go through these things know that it takes a lot of time and effort and work. So I've been really busy with that. I've also been kind of stressed about it, you know, waiting for phone calls. And um, if I get too stressed, I can't knit because that knitting will look like crap. My tension will be insane. So... (laughs) So anyway, um, yay, exciting news. So I'm going to be moving to Washington into the Seattle region, and I couldn't be more thrilled. So (laughs) yay. Um, So I'm currently in Texas. I'm currently in like West Central Texas area. Uh, where there are, let's just talk the knitting side, there are no local yarn shops. Like, local is, the closest one would be in, would be like two hours away. So it'd be a four hour round trip to go to a yarn shop. Like a yarn shop, not a big box craft store. So, and in the Seattle region, while I was there for one of my interviews, I did, of course, stop into a yarn shop. Um, anyway, (laughs) so, uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, Obviously, I'm excited about working for the institution because they're amazing. So, yarn stuff aside, location aside, the college is amazing top-notch and I'm super excited. (laughs) So yeah. And um, in the Seattle region, hopefully uh, my husband will have a better chance of getting his dream job as well at his dream institution. And um, we can live out our our happy days out in in the Seattle region. So um, I don't have really any more specifics. We still don't know we have to find a place to live. We have to decide when we're going to move. We have to pack up all our stuff. We have to... Okay. So, there will be a lot. I I can just imagine now the vlogs that are going to be happening with moving and packing and all the craziness. I'm sure there will be some kind of moving sale in the future with... Um, bags and patterns and things like that. Um, so look for those things coming up in the Etsy shop and on Ravelry, probably not till closer to when we move, but you get what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, I'm just, yay, I'm so excited. So, um, yeah, I just, I couldn't wait to tell you guys. So I know I said this was non-knitting, but now that I've told you guys that I got the job I have to share the yarn that I got while I was there for the interview. So while I was out in the Seattle region for my interview, I stopped at Serial Knitters in Kirkland. And what an awesome shop with an amazing staff and lots of people and lots of yarn and lots of sales. And it was amazing. So Yeah, my husband was like, while you're out there, you should treat yourself to some yarn. He's so nice like that. (laughs) Um, To reward yourself for all of your hard work and uh, just treat yourself to some yarn. Because part of the reason being that I don't have a local yarn shop around here anymore. So that's what I did. And I totally raided their clearance yarn. So... They had on clearance some black trillium fibers, which I've never tried before, and I'm excited to. Mm. (laughs) Oh my gosh, this color is amazing, and it's looking more orange on screen, so I think what I'll do is put in a video of this yarn. But this is black trillium fibers. It is on the lilt sock base, 
which is an 85% superwash merino, 15% mulberry silk. Um, this is 100 grams, a full skein, and the colorway is Portland Rose, and it's awesome. So, yeah, black trillium fibers. Uh, the ladies there said that the dyer behind Black Trillium Fibers used to live in the area, but she moved closer to Portland, so um, they weren't going to be able to get yarn from them anymore, and so they were, it was on sale trying to, to I guess, to push the yarn, <laughs> um, and so I got some. And this color is amazing. So I'm excited to work with this. And then in the other um, sales section, I thought, okay, I am really loving solids and neutrals right now. And so I picked up these three. Oh my gosh. To make, I don't know to make I don't know but these are um, each a 100 gram skein so um, there are three full skeins they look smaller because they're longer but no it's 100 grams um, this is a hundred percent SWT wool SWT wool Super wash Targi. Maybe. I'm going to have to look that up now. Um, so the brand is... Oh my gosh, I should have asked them how to pronounce these things before I brought it home. Okay. There's the label. It has sheep on it. And I want to say it's Jagger Spun. Uh, but apparently they're based in Maine. But I got this is Ecru. This is Hazelnut. And this is Nutmeg. And it's going to be amazing. I bet it's Targi. I bet it's super wash Targi. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm thinking maybe could be color work it could be like a cropped cropped sweater I don't know I don't know but um yeah I'm excited so I got these and then my crazy skein my pop color so yeah anyway all right so, big podcast, big news, lots of whips. Hopefully, next time, I will have some finished objects to share with you. Uh, I should be able to finish up those socks. Yeah, I should be able to finish up those socks. So, next weekend is DFW Fiber Fest 2019. Uh, in April and I'm totally going. So um, I don't know if there will be a podcast that weekend. DFW Fiber Fest is that first weekend in April. So I'm going. <laughs> I will do my best to take pictures and things. I will obviously bringing home, be bringing home gorgeous goodies to share with you and my family. And um, yeah, so either, yeah, I'm going to say probably two weeks from now will be the next episode. I, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> that's it. I'm just rambling at this point. I'm so happy right now, so excited about everything that's happening. So, yes, I will keep knitting and you keep knitting, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!